this year. We've got ahead of the curve. Actually, make some coin. This is Neil. He's going to be our new head painter. 1971 Super B, 64 Prigian wagon, 53 LaFrance convertible pumper. When talking about Canadian reality TV shows, Rust Valley Restorers is one of the most watched. This show, hosted by Mike Hall, shows him and his team collecting rusty classic cars to restore them to good shape. Since I've started Rust Brothers, I've lost thousands of dollars. The whole plan was to get rid of cars. You gained probably 150 more. What makes this show stand out is Mike's resilience and dedication to making each project a success. You would expect Mike to make so much from his projects considering all that he puts into them, but unfortunately, he loses a great deal of money on them. That's nothing compared to the news of Mike letting go of his field of dreams. A collection of about 500 vintage cars he has owned for about three to four decades. This has raised the question, what really happened to Mike Hall from Rust Valley Restorers for making that decision? Rust Valley Restorers. For the sake of those who don't know about this show, it is a Canadian documentary TV series produced by Mayhem Entertainment for the History Channel in association with Chorus Entertainment. The premise focuses on an extremely unique and quirky car community in the Rocky Mountains of Tappan, British Columbia, transforming rusty abandoned cars into drool-worthy classics. For a long time, Tappan, also known as Rust Valley, has been known as home to several abandoned cars, these cars are usually cars that are so many people's dreams, but they are usually found abandoned by their owners for different reasons. This is why Tappan is also home to a restoration shop run by interesting characters. Using their automotive skills, they pick up these cars, restore them, and sell these classic cars left for dead to interested buyers. No matter what an abandoned car looks like before restoration, Mike Hall will make sure you fall in love with it after restoring it. This is because what Mike and his team do, they do it very well. Although Rust Valley Restorers is not a show run by a single person, we still need to doff our hats to the brain behind the establishment Mike Hall. Mike Hall or Michael Bourne, February 4, 1958, is an entrepreneur and a rust collector who enjoys running his car restoration business in Rust Valley. He started collecting cars when he was a teen and would later become a TV star for the same. He started a show known as Rust Valley Restorers, which garnered a lot of attention. While the show has a lot of fans to its name, there are a lot of unknown facts about the show and even Mike Hall, including how Rusty Valley Restorers started. Many people didn't know that this show started in an unusual manner. For some people, they have their shows all planned out, and with a lot of awareness, they begin to air the show, but that's not the case for Mike Hall and his show. Although Mike was not new to being on TV, he didn't have a plan to make his own show. He had appeared on different shows including Highway Through Hell, and it was shortly after one episode of this series that he became famous. The series followed a Canadian towing recovery team as they came to the rescue of felled vehicles on some of the most dangerous and difficult roads in Hope, British Columbia. And Mike Hall's memorable appearance in Season 6, Episode 10, Junior's Job, brought him to the attention of both television audiences and TV producers. He didn't find himself at the center of public attention for his role in the series, but after a story of him putting up five acres of land and over 300 vintage cars, various World War II-era motorcycles and military for sale went viral. Talking of which, his beloved Rusty collection started small with a few rare classic cars. According to Mike Hall, his first car was a 51 International, but that wasn't the car that got things started for him. The next car he had was 61 Alpine, which was what got things started for him. After he ran the car to the side of a mountain at about 100 miles an hour, he ended up buying six or seven little 62 to 65 Novas. After this fame, Matt Shuchuk, a producer with Mayhem Entertainment, pitched the idea of doing a show with the cars to Mike Hall. Since Mike Hall was a collector, not a restorer, he was initially hesitant but after putting together a team and funding over three days, he ultimately agreed to take the plunge. And just like that, Rust Valley Restorers was born. To get the show started in 2018, Mike Hall built the restoration shop on his rural property. However, they got off to a rocky start. Mike's accountant broke the heartbreaking news to him after he broke even on just two cars and lost a lot of money in the process. 
Mike and his team had retired a 1963 Continental convertible that had a quoted price of just around $17,000, which had its real cost to be about $50,000. Mike realized that just because a show is filming in his shop doesn't make him any more productive or his business any more lucrative. He also noticed that he and his team have trouble distinguishing between an estimate and a quote when dealing with customers. Because of the differential in these numbers, he admits that losing money, especially when shown on camera, creates lots of tension between him and his crew. But from what you may know, Mike Hall doesn't look or live like he's poor. And yes, if you were asked, you would say that Mike Hall is a rich man. So, how did he get rich? Before we answer that question, you should know that Mike Hall boasts an estimated net worth of $5 million. You may say it's not that big of a deal, but for someone who resells old cars, that's respectable. However, Mike's wealth didn't come from selling or restoring old cars. Way before he became the reality TV star that we all know, he was into the construction business. As it turns out, Mike Hall owned his own business in the slope stabilization industry called Chimera Springs Rockworks known as the Rasta Blasta due to his infamous dreadlocks. Mike Hall and his company scaled unstable roadside cliffs and set off explosives to control their unpredictable and dangerous erosion. According to Hot Cars' Corey Barkley, Mike, as of December 2021, had managed to rake in about $5 million, mostly from construction, while the rest of the equity is in the cars and property he owns. Despite his success, there's quite a bit of truth to the narrative that Hall puts his love for cars over his love for money, and the road to reality TV stardom was filled with potholes. He made more money from his construction business and put the profit he earned directly into buying old cars that he liked, which he then restored and sold for a profit. For decades, Mike continued to pursue his passion for restoring cool classics, even if it meant selling them for less than he spent to repair them. And though he admits that fixing up cars doesn't go as fast as he'd like now that he's a reality TV star, it should be frustrating, right? The good thing for Mike is that he isn't alone in all of this. His wife is very supportive as she's also a classic car enthusiast. Her son and friends also help him with this business so he finds fulfillment in what he does, his show especially. Talking about the show, there are so many questions. When it comes to reality TV shows, you sometimes wonder if they are 100% real. You want to know what's scripted and what's not. Well, as you may have guessed, not everything you see on reality TV shows is real, including Rust Valley Restorers. However, the show is not totally scripted. So here's what's real about Rust Valley Restorers. We don't have to argue about what's real and what's not anymore. Even Mike himself admits that not every single thing that happens on the show is real. However, According to him, 90% of the show is real. An example of what he says is real is him erupting at his son for dropping a piece of car equipment. Now you have your answer. Not everything on the show is real. There are some constructed scenes, and there may be some amplified interactions between father and friend or father and son for dramatic effect. As any self-respecting fan of reality TV knows, a large part of a series' overarching narrative comes from a scripted simplification of its featured character dynamics. This is as true for Rust Valley Restorers as it is for, say, keeping up with the Kardashians, despite the far more apparent use of the technique in the latter. In the car-based history series, the Rust Brothers Restoration's owner is often depicted as having little skill when it comes to focusing on turning a profit, while his son Connor is portrayed as forever attempting to get his father to think about the bottom line. Nonetheless, we can see how the real story behind Mike Hall and Rust Valley Restorers isn't always shown on the television program. Still, Hall keeps it real with his description of his company, his thoughts about being on a TV show, and his brutally candid statement about his finances. While Hall's blind love for car collection and restoration does indeed lead him to make some less than financially sound decisions, his entrepreneurial history suggests he's no amateur when it comes to running a business. Whatever he said about the show, his life or his finances was not as shocking as his announcement about selling his field of dreams which made his fans wonder, what really happened to Mike Hall from Rust Valley Restorers? The shocking news? 
Imagine knowing the genesis of an empire that took sweat and blood to build, only to find out one day that this empire would cease to exist. That's a big shocker, right? It's just the case for Mike Hall and his property. For everyone who had been following the Rust Valley Restorers since its little beginning, the news of Mike Hall selling off his cars came as a big shock. And now as we speak, what started with a dream to restore roughly 600 muscle cars to their former glory has dwindled to 40. Mike Hall held this auction and sold more of his famous muscle cars. This is what he had accumulated in more than 40 years. His collection had hundreds of vehicles which he stored on his field of dreams, which he said he didn't want to leave behind to his family. Considering that Mike Hall has a loving family that he loves wholeheartedly, why would he make such a statement? Before you judge him, though, here's his reason. Mike Hall said what he said about not leaving his collection for his family because he was unsure of what could happen if he dropped dead tomorrow. Mike is already pushing 70, and it's only normal for a man his age to think about his last days and grave. He cited one of his friends who ran the same business as him as an example. According to him, when his friend died, his family sold his cars for a ridiculous amount of money leaving them to suffer for it. Mike believes that if he sold his cars in his lifetime, he would sell them better than anyone else. However, Mike could not sell all of his cars. But according to him, he sold every car he had listed. He took an ass whooping on some and some went for way more than he expected so, on the aggregate the auction went very well. And for the first time since Mike has started his collection, his car fits in one yard. The reason for his actions. The year before the auction was a tough one for Mike, as he said he basically came out of retirement with his business due to the number of natural disasters across the province. Natural disasters can be very bad, especially for one's business. However, Mike is not planning to fold up the business completely, but he plans to give the business to his son, Connor Hall who is also a star on the show. For the past three years, Mike has been using New Life Outreach property to store cars, but they have plans to develop it, so Hall had to sell more cars. He said he sold two $50,000 to two $60,000 worth of projects to other people who can deal with them and kept some of his favorites. And he doesn't think he's going to be going on a purchasing binge anytime soon. Mike kept all his 1970 Dodge Super Bs as well as some Chevys, including a 64 Malibu SS four-speed convertible he's had for 30 years and a Buick GS four-speed he's had for 40 years and more. Apart from stating natural disasters as a reason, Mike is pushing 70 and he stated he's already getting tired. He said, Even if I drop dead tomorrow, I wouldn't feel bad. My family can deal with 40 cars. I think I've done a pretty good job. It's someone else's turn. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Let's look at the life of Mike Hall. A life defined by a passion for building and restoring old, rusty cars into eye candy. Many people would have envied the life of this great man, and after he announced that he would not continue with the life we have known him to live, many felt disappointed. Now that you know what really happened to Mike Hall of Rust Valley Restorers, do you think he made poor decisions about his retirement? Do you think he was being pessimistic by thinking about his grave even without having health challenges? Or do you agree with him on what he did? Kindly share your thoughts with us as we continue to share with you what you don't know about Mike Hall and Rusty Valley Restorers. So if Mike Hall is no longer doing his show or hanging out with his cars, what is he doing now? After the recent news of Mike selling off a major chunk of 500 of his rusting vintage cars was shocking for Rust Valley fans, many even speculated that this move by Mike was an indication of Rust Valley Restorers and Rust Brothers Restorations. But it was, in fact, quite the opposite of the rumors. Mike was stuck between keeping his beloved classic car collection and making money to keep Rust Valley Restorers going. The last episode of Season 4 shows us Mike finally letting go of his beloved collection. Avery and Connor couldn't bear him parting ways with his beloved collection, and so made it easy for him by giving Mike a choice of 10 cars that he would want to keep. But he ended up keeping 40 cars from the lot to himself. Mike Hall is very much invested in Rust Bros restoration. His social media accounts, including Facebook and Instagram, show that Mike has no intention of wrapping things up with Rust Valley. Mike used to run a demolition business before his on-screen fame with Rust Valley. 
But today, he is completely invested in the car restoration shop and has let go of the demolition side. He is also accompanied by his son, Connor Hall, who is still indulged in giving rusty old cars a new shiny lease of life. But what's more important to fans is, will there be a season five? The reality TV show Rust Valley Restorers stars Mike Hall, better known as the Rasta Blasta for his dreadlocks and rock blasting business, and his team of auto mechanics didn't really come straight about this. As we see them in each episode, they take broken down cars and restore them to their former glory. It just gives us the joy of watching something gone bad transform into a perfect beauty. So yes, no one wants to see the show go. Mike Hall confirmed they're filming season five but was tight-lipped if this will be the last season we would ever see. Connor Hall also put up an Instagram post indicating a new upcoming season of Rust Valley Restorers. It is filmed and ready but awaiting a release date. While we don't have a particular date, prepare to reset your eyes on your beloved show, come 2024. When season five of Rust Valley releases, History Channel Canada and Motor Trend Plus subscribers will most likely be the first to watch it. Netflix subscribers would have to wait longer because, as of now, season four is also not available on Netflix. We are curious to see the next season as the end of season four saw Mike Hall make the hardest choice of his life selling his 500 car collection and all the vehicles he hadn't managed to save. Hall was running out of time and money as a result of impending forest fires in the area and new permission restrictions that might have forced him to close his business. Ultimately, he decided to sell his collection at auction. Meanwhile, his best buddy, Avery Schof, was having trouble running his own restoration company because of complaints from the locals. Connor, Mike's son, continued to support his father's company while also planning his own wedding. Today, the Rust Valley team is ready for another mesmerizing season. So get ready for an exciting watch. Key players of the show. We can't help but talk about this integral member of the Rusty Valley Restorers team mechanic and series star Avery Schof, who took a similarly unconventional path to reality TV fame. Though Shoaf has intentionally and, in a rare turn of events, successfully kept the majority of his personal life and history out of the public eye, there are a few things we know. For instance, although the notoriously mysterious mechanic is tight-lipped about his romantic life, he doesn't shy away from posting pictures of his son, Shafin, whose name was eventually garnered from comments on social media, as opposed to from Shoaf himself on his widely followed Instagram, which boasts over 140,000 followers. Fans of the series also know that Hall's son Connor, a former employee of Shof, views the larger-than-life personality as a kind of mentor. Finally, we know that as of 2020, Hall's cohort in car restoration had an estimated net worth of around $200,000. His intriguing and hard-to-come-by real-life narrative notwithstanding is just a part of what makes Rust Valley Restorers so appealing to television audiences. He has done so. Much for the show, and he would not be forgotten when Rust Valley Restorers is mentioned. Unlike other series of its kind, such as American Chopper, the Canadian spin on the genre features several women. One of those women, auto body apprentice Cassidy McYown, has been a major player in several Rust Valley Restorers episodes, and her Instagram following rivals that of any of her co-stars. Though she may be an apprentice at the start of the series, McYown is by no means new to the business of collecting, appreciating, and rejuvenating car cadavers. As she reveals in a History Channel interview, McYown's entire family is into cars. Both her mother and father are mechanics, and she's had a love of cars imbibed in her from a young age. Despite not having a choice in the matter, McYown's passion for the trade is both real and visible to viewers. As of 2021, she had an estimated net worth of $1.2 million, but that hasn't prevented her from taking her work seriously. In a recent interview, Mick Yown spoke passionately about the benefit of entering into a trade, the importance of the collision trade itself, and the creativity that goes into a repair approach. Despite her love for the job, Mick Yown was honest about what it's like to be a woman in a largely male-dominated industry. She said, you always have to work a little extra harder, adding that constantly having to prove herself puts the fire under her to do exactly that. 
Her appreciation for all things auto makes her every bit as qualified as anyone else in the series. That's really impressive. The humanitarian nature of Rust Brothers. If there's anything you need to know about this show, it is the humanitarian nature of this team. Rust Bros Restorations aren't just in it for the money. In 2019, they helped Habitat for Humanity in Kamloops, Canada, begin a brand new fundraising tradition. As the Salmon Arm Observer reported at the time, the team donated a prized classic car with a value of nearly $70,000 to the housing-oriented nonprofit, which featured the car in a fundraising raffle. At the charity's Jingle Bell Rock Dinner and Dance in December of that year, raffle participant Louise Dagg took home the restored 1968 Camaro SS convertible, kicking off what would become an annual event for Kamloops Habitat for Humanity. The following year, the organization raffled off a 1968 Beaumont convertible, and in 2021, they raised funds with the help of a 1969 Barracuda convertible. The Rust Brothers Restoration's generous donation helped the charity in its goal to build 70-plus homes in various locations for 2020, as Executive Director Bill Miller told CFJC Today, and gave the local nonprofit an idea for a tradition that has continued ever since. Currently, the Kamloops Habitat for Humanity is raffling off a 1979 Harley-Davidson, charging just $10 for a chance to take home the bike while helping to build affordable housing for seniors, veterans, and families throughout the area. You must agree, this is just super amazing. With all that has been said about Mike Hall, his show, and his company, what do you have to say about it all? Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.